Ladies and gentlemen, this is a regularly scheduled meeting, and I'm hearing myself, because that guy back there with the voice of a World War II bomber pilot <laughs> is absolutely Although awesome. Although pretty profane. It's Profa profane. profane. Yeah, he's pretty oh, profane, too. Profound, because today was the Battle of the Bulge. That's exactly right. Oh, started 75 years ago today. Yeah. Four, four weeks. Yep. No, uh, see, you didn't know you knew that, did you? As soon you? as they turn the cameras on, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> see? <laughs> Off it goes. So here we here we have a regularly scheduled meeting. We're of full of information. Central Useless, but we're full of it. <laughs> and full of that, too. <laughs> board of Select Men. Uh, sorry, Select Board, even though the Scott. governor has the governor hasn't signed it yes, yet. Yes, he did. He signed it? Yes. I didn't see the email. We got the official word. I said it was on his desk. No. Yeah, I, I thought think it they, went to the next stage. I didn't think it actually had been signed yet. Right, yeah. That's right. what I read that as. Dear Mr. Baker, of all the things to consider. I, I, thought, I, I thought I got a note that said he's good. All of the considerations. Let me on look your, up my notes. All the considerations on your desk, $541 million supplemental budget plan, Center. all kinds of stuff that's important to the Commonwealth. Please remember that someone petitioned for us to have a name change, and we'd like to be something more than the Sunderland Select Board of Awesome at some point. But tonight we'll, we'll just be awesome. We're starting off with that's been a running joke. People should see people should see Chris Collins' article in last week's last Friday's paper. Anyway, tonight we have update from our esteemed colleagues from RDI, Laura Baker and Company, updates and optional renewals. I don't think options are really going to be necessary or important. Uh, we're having a, a public forum, and the place is packed on School Street design. Carlos did, and uh, 120, I'm sorry, and the Sunderland Village Center Committee did such a good job last week that no one showed up to vote tonight. Yeah. Right? So well played there. We're going to talk about maybe even filling a town administrator's position. Maybe. But again, <laughs> no one's here. So we'll deal with that. we got about 200 licenses to approve tonight. And the Blue Heron extension of hours for New Year's Eve. The only business that consistently applies within the guideline that the town set 15 years ago. And bless the Blue Heron for being on their A game. Okay, so straight up, Laura Baker and RDI, RE updates, an optional renewal. Should we renew? Should we? We're sure hoping you Okay. Do. How's it going? My Come on up. Approach. Come on up. I want to introduce Gina. So I don't know, I don't know all of you. I'm, I'm Laura Baker. I serve as the real estate project manager at Valley Community Development, and we are contracted to be the project manager to Rural Development Inc., who's the sponsor of the Sunderland Senior House Project. Got it. Project. Introduce yourself, Gina. Sure. Uh, my name is Gina Gavoni. I uh, have been the ED now at RDI since July of this year. I've known Laura for a bit longer through prior work at Wayfinders down in Springfield. Nice. So, um, anyway, she has been our, our, our guide star in this. and. Uh, we're here to present our six month report. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So it seems timely to come in. Yeah. I assume folks got the six month report. We got it. Yep. Um, I can just hit the highlights real quick. Um, we had appeals, the appeals are settled. Uh, ZBA is all good. Uh, we've been doing a little bit more due diligence on, on the property. Any surprises, Laura? Sorry. Any surprises? No, good. there's no. It's it's pretty good. The um, we knew there'd be lead paint. We thought there might be asbestos. There's not that. So we're talking much. specific to the mm -hmm. house now. Yeah. I would mention the house is not faring that well. We knew. So there is uh, some rain coming in the roof mm -hmm. and in the basement and things. So it could be you want to have someone look at it and okay. just right. try to Hatchet. hold it together till we we'll get do that. there. <laughs> um, uh, we did additional borings, uh, no surprises there in terms of, you know, the soils are kind of mm -hmm. what we thought they were, um, but because we're putting them on the site, we have to look at the compaction, compactability of, of those soils and, and plan accordingly. Um, RDI has continued to borrow money to work on this project, and the Community Economic Development Assistance Corporation, CDAC, has continued to lend it to them. 
Um, we uh, put in a pre-application for the main state uh, financing round mm -hmm. in November. We thought we might hear today about it, but we didn't. We expect to hear imminently. Okay. It's a yes or no whether you get to go in and put in a bigger application, a much bigger application in February. <coughs> Um, it's so it's just a gate that you go through. We do anticipate being invited to come in. Uh, RDI was invited in last year, and then when there was an appeal, they said, no, you can't oh, come in. That makes they sense. won't deal with you when you're under the cloud of some kind of legal action, because other people are ready, and you're not ready. Um, so plans are currently 50% design development in order to be competitive in this statewide funding round. Um, our goal is to get to 75% construction drawings. Um, by February so that we can show a lot of readiness. Um, it also helps us get more accurate cost estimates if the plans are further developed. Makes sense. Um, just so that Gina's new here. Um, I did give you a revised timeline. Mm -hmm. So basically when the appeal happened, appeals happened, everything shifted basically a year because we couldn't go over financing last year, we're going in this year. And it kind of flows forward from that. So if you have any questions, this is your best case scenario timeline. And this assumes we go in this time and we get funded first time in, which is a little unusual. It's not unprecedented. It's partly why we're doing an aggressive ask in terms of having plans really ready, um, because it's highly competitive. So you need to be kind of showing that you're ready. If they give you the money, you're ready to proceed. Um, and so the other reason we thought we would come in uh, in person is that some of you may not be that familiar with the original option agreement that was signed for the property. So it laid out um, terms and conditions, um, basically the idea is the town continues to own the property until such time as RDI has permitted, which it has, um, and raised all the funds necessary to do the project. Mm -hmm. And so typically you come to this benchmark called closing, where you close on all your financing sources and you transfer the property at the same time. The town at that point typically takes a deed restriction on the property to guarantee the affordability that is your right. motive for doing all this work. Um, so because of the appeals, we are running behind. Um, and so the extension had contemplated a couple of opportunities to, to extend the option agreement, and the last one ended uh, would have ended uh, July 15th, 2020. Um, if you look at the timeline, you'll see that we don't anticipate, again, best case timeline, uh, acquiring the property until February of 2021. And so what we've written requesting is to have that already contemplated six month extension mm -hmm. through July 15th, 2020, plus 12 months beyond that to July 15th, 2021. Um, if all goes well, we won't need that much time. If all doesn't go well, we'll come back and need more time because it's really an annual funding cycle and it's a yes or no, you get it, you don't yeah. get it. You don't get it, you come back the next year. That's historically apply Q4 and then you're announced Q1 of the calendar year? You apply typically in February okay. of the year. It's a quarter of a <coughs> And they make announcements in July or August. Okay. Um, and then <coughs> this process to close on financing typically takes about six months. It's yeah. when all the lawyers, it's a feeding frenzy, oh, yeah. lawyers, honestly. Yep. And so. <laughs> Got to keep them employed somehow, Town right? Council, <coughs> <jump in. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's keep our costs down. Um, so we had uh, basically, we had done a prior extension mm -hmm. um, under the option agreement. We took the language from that, I took the language from that extension and adapted it for this proposed option extension that we sent to you folks. Mm -hmm. um, RDI's attorney, Felicity Hardy, at the same time sent it to Sharin Everett um, from KP Law. And Sharin wrote back just a one-liner, you know, got this, I'll check it the select board. Okay. So assuming that you'll just yeah. vet it through the law and make sure there's no, nothing controversial in here. Um, certainly the lawyers are comfortable working with each other to massage the language should it be necessary. Um, basically says you're amenable to extending and it talks about why we need, why our DI needs the extension. You know, unforeseen delays outside of its control related to three separate appeals, kind of butter. Uh, the fact that RDI has successfully resolved all of the open appeals and the RDI continues to make good faith and diligent efforts toward accomplishment of the project. 
unit total value didn't change? The number of units did not change. Okay. Costs are ever increasing. Right. As construction mm -hmm. costs increase, the total development cost also increases. Okay. So it's 33 units, three units in the house with an addition, 30 units in a multi-story building, uh, 30 of the total units are one bedrooms, three are two bedrooms. Uh, the income targets, targets are 30% uh, and 60% of the area yeah. median income. Okay. Good. Questions to the board? Uh, Any extension? It's KP Law has copy. We'll get yeah, their guidance. It's pretty straightforward. This is like it's dated, specific <coughs> to dates, and it's going to be in line with the 2021 and the timeline at that point there, we're beginning to talk about close on construction financing property transfer. February is your mark. Can this allow us a little slush in that? Exactly. Got it. And it's either a go or no go. We'll know yeah. um, by fall whether RDI has been successful in this funding round or not. Okay. And should we be concerned that we now have a new director, executive director? <laughs> no. no. Good. See, that's the right answer. Right <laughs> answer. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks for the hard work on this. Okay. There's no more discussion. Is there a motion? To uh, I know. I just. I. We. We knew we were in for a ride anyway. So. Yeah. Doesn't happen fast. <laughs> and, and 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 I was contacted by a group in Hardwick mm -hmm. that that's very interested in how we are being how we propose to bring senior housing to our town so they invited me to Hardwick for a, for a meeting so a lot of small towns are trying to solve this puzzle mm -hmm. well you, you know I, I still you know it, it, it's interesting with with our our, our state, unfortunately, sometimes doesn't. They talk. They talk about regional solutions, but senior housing doesn't seem to be a solution that they look at regional answers to. I'm not sure why. And and we're going to be meeting with our state senator and state rep at the end of January, and, and that's one of the things I'd like to talk to them about because I know we have towns just on the <coughs> other side of the, the river that would that are you know interested in doing something but they feel sometimes their their hands are tied um, and so I, I just want to ask why we can't look at regional solutions to some of our questions as well yeah well I always think about housing as being regional mm -hmm. so when we did a market study for this development in Sunderland it wasn't just looking at the market in Sunderland right so the primary market is Sunderland but then the secondary market is... All the surrounding towns. You know, yeah. Deerfield and Whateley. <coughs> well, and there, is no, there is nothing towns. around us. I mean, you have to go to Northfield or Gill yep, yep. or there's Green. Not but there's, there's <laughs> right. not a, there yes. is not really yes. enough. Yes. And, and, it, and it's interesting because when we talk about senior housing, um, there, there's a lot... There, the need is growing. Yep. Um, but right now, the, there hasn't been a lot of money going towards solving that, that problem. That is, I would say that's accurate. Some of the programs like the old uh, 202 program, the federal program that created a lot of senior housing has been basically defunded. And our state, Department of Housing and Community Development, their priority is family housing. Right. And they've been articulate about that. It doesn't mean they don't fund senior housing, but it's always a smaller part of the pie overall I, I had a class and it was on MCPPO training we mm -hmm. love that don't we <laughs> and and there was um, a gentleman from the Chicopee Housing Authority and we were talking about in particular about senior housing mm -hmm. and, and and when I told him we partnered with you try to bring he wished us nothing but the best of luck because he said it's so difficult to try to fund senior housing right now. Mm -hmm. And he had good things to say about the guys, so. 
Are you mm. aware of the, um, the, there's a regional small town housing working group that the Franklin Regional, Franklin Regional Council of Governments yeah. is coordinating? <clears throat> Um, I don't know if it's something to be interested in. It's not focused specifically on senior housing, but I can tell you, having been to one of their meetings, it is it is a very common concern among the representatives. Hmm. It it is, but it, it you know e even when when we have our newest complex going in, the state never. It, it's unfortunate because we we never we we were never able to have a true discussion with them the state anyone about what was happening what what the needs were and they didn't they didn't really care uh, well, or didn't seem like they cared i think that laura and i have tried to um, make the case for the need for for a senior housing here in the valley and i think the market study certainly speaks to that and you know, we, we did report on there being a successful call uh, between us and DHCD, the mm. Department of Housing, um, to really put that point home. And I think that there there was awareness of the lack of new development here um, in general and for seniors. But there is still, I think, the message on the changing demographic in this area right. needs to be continued. We need to continue to tell that story. I agree. So we, we will we're, we're, that's one of the things that that I was planning on talking with our state legislators when they're here in a month right. was that specific thing about mm -hmm. about okay. yeah. I well sometimes you know un, unless unless you're involved I mean unless you unless you're involved and get involved and so, and sometimes you get in the involvement it's just like um, the community meals that I run up in Greenfield. Mm -hmm. Our, our men's club goes up and we support, you know, three or four meals a year. Mm -hmm. And when we first started, um, most of our most of the members in the group did not think that there was a problem. Mm -hmm. need. I served last week. There was a full house. <laughs> well, I, our, I think our biggest was like 105. We only had about 70, but it's still it was. It, it depends on when checks are coming out. And right. and in in the in the weather, but some of our but some of our um, people that were the least um, they didn't see it as a need. They they now are the ones that we have to beat away with a stick when we tell them there's not enough. We don't need any more help. Right. Yeah. Um, yes. Because they they will volunteer all the time now because they saw the need, but you don't see it. And, and that and that's the thing with senior in, in from my work in the senior center mm -hmm. is that if you don't if you're not involved with a it's it's out of mind out of mm -hmm. sight and you don't know there's a need yeah, we're all there, there is, in general, it's a little more hidden. there is a need mm -hmm. there is a tremendous need well I, I would just say to think about the rural housing working group because um, you know, just I'm, I am participating on it, but Sunderland is seen as a real leader um, for this region and this area um, for having brought this project forward and sticking with it. So even though we're not there yet, um, the advocacy and the no, you, it, you, but we could look. We could have done it for us. For us, it was simple. Our our residents know there's a concern, and and by having the CPA, the CPA allows. It, there's a lot of things that the CPA made made happen right. but having a partner like you guys is really what made what really makes it mm -hmm. exactly. well, we're because, because, well you but you're right because you're 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 fighting for us mm -hmm. and and that's important we see the need every day yeah so we appreciate it so if we will we'll let you know if um this project is invited into this funding round we do expect that um, and then also would look to the board to provide a letter of support to accompany that application. It's very meaningful to the state if you from the select board. From the right. select board. Nice. Um, if you not to be confused with select board of Austin. Yeah. Supporting. So we'll be legal by then. I don't know if you need to vote to write a letter like that. But we still did. We will. Yeah. <laughs> that we that, that's our policy. So you want you want a motion to extend the. Uh, the contract, Mr. Chair? Uh, not only to extend the contract, but yeah, upon uh, review by council. <coughs> Motion. Second. <coughs> All
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. And in that letter, as we draft that letter, Laura, I think the, the timeline with a narrative as a starting point to our current point would be helpful as well. But our starting point was uh, addressing the concern long before 120. Mm -hmm. I think the focus of your letter is our letter, exactly. All the stuff that you guys have done right. to support this. Got it. I mean, you went out on a limb to buy that property. Um, so. Perfect. We'll make sure to do that and uh, we'll send that uh, to you. We we'll would have like it. to have it. We would enjoy having it by February 1st. Easy. 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 So always feel Easy free to reach out to us if there's any questions or wonder what's happening. We got it. Well, hopefully there's not much right now except getting the roof fixed. Yeah. We'll take care of that. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks for your thanks. time. Thanks, thanks Executive thank Director. Nice. nice to meet you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much, Laura. Yeah. <clears throat> now it's time for our multimedia show. Da, da, da. So I, I, I talked to uh, Chris last last week about the, the, door. the screen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I said, can we just put a 65 inch or 55 yeah. inch up there? Sure. And, well, and he said, that's easy. Folks that. What's that? Yeah, he said it's easy. Yeah. I said, well, oh, yeah. make it happen. Yeah. We need to make it. Right, exactly. We have been working with them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, same here. Same here. So, uh, I was actually done pricing some and, um, Glenn, Glenn says he will not be able to make any meetings. So, is he a member of the committee? He, I don't think he's been sworn in, so he hasn't been, no, he hasn't been sworn in. So he's not a member of the committee. Not an official member. Okay. So, so he hasn't been sworn in, so he's not a member. Brilliant. However you want to do it. I can also make this a little bit. So, uh, as a recap from last week, um, the Village Center Committee um, as part of the charge has, has sort of taken leadership on the school street, um, streetscape design, and we've worked with Carlos in several meetings as a follow-up to the sort of large public uh, information session that we had a few months ago. And I think Carlos did a really excellent job of incorporating a lot of the comments that um, particularly residents on the street had, and that drove a lot of the um, direction that we gave him <coughs> to proceed I think we're now down to two concepts, and essentially Carlos needs direction by hopefully coming out of this meeting between the Board of Selectmen and our committee so that he can pursue one of these options and get the project ready for the next round of grant funding. Yes, um, so I hope the people on School Street who were invited I think tonight um, are watching at home, but um, I think either solution is really um, I think they're both excellent. I think we're really down to a decision on that kind of parking. Okay. So. Hey, and um, so just introduce myself. I'm Carlos Nieto. I've been working with the committee and the town for the School Street uh, re redesign um, now for about a year, I would say, and worked on other projects also in town. Um, and from, I want to move ourselves from that uh, last public hearing we had. Um, like Lori mentioned, the most important thing that I think came out of that was really listening to the neighbors and making sure that we were taking into consideration their their uh, concerns. Um, we showed several, at least four concepts at that time, had different uh, uh, options of having poles on one side, meaning some of the power lines being on either side. Also, we talked about different ways of dealing with the sidewalks. I think we've narrowed it down to two concepts where um, gonna go through very quickly. Uh, we first identify what some of the issues that we had on School Street, this is what that board shows is, you know, the issues on the uh, entrance uh, in itself, that it was too wide, um, issues with the uh, parking and, and, and having a lot of parking right at the entrance of where the, uh, all of the town offices uh, are, are there and, and, and trying to move some of that parking out of the way or at least uh, making uh, more um, uh, evident that there is some uh, 
uh, town offices and, and, and civic <laughs> uh, institutions here, if you want to call them, uh, not just a parking lot uh, that we were just uh, moving there. <coughs> so we identified some issues with uh, uh, traffic uh, that some of the, neighbor, the neighbors had uh, complained, and, and rightfully so, that there were uh, people speeding on School Street or people would get uh, confused and going into School Street and didn't know where they were, and then when they were moving out of School Street, they would be going a, a little bit faster. Um, and so with the, this first analysis, we moved to the designs that we presented last time, and now we are at uh, the point where we're looking at basically two concepts. Um, the first things that I want to point out, because again, those concerns of the neighbors is uh, we at one point had uh, thought about how, what would happen if we moved uh, the, the, the poles or the power lines uh, that were on the north side of the street, moving them to the south side of the street, and there was a lot of pushback from the neighbors, and we understood that. Um, it would definitely be a difference for them and an interruption um, on, on their uh, front yards. So we, we took that into consideration. None of these two concepts have uh, the power lines on the south side. They both still have the power lines and the post on the north side. Uh, what we've done is move some of those posts uh, strategically so that they're, uh, for example, we have one post in particular that's right in the line with the entrance to the town offices. So we want to move those away and create more of a entrance uh, to to the town offices and the vets uh, memorial and kind of the back of the library and, and, and that area so carlos if i could just yeah it's important to keep reiterating that all or any work that is proposed is inside of the public way yes so yes. as we as we talked about the polls on the south side <laughs> it wasn't the eminent domain and taking people's oh, yards. No, not at all it's no. all public way work yeah, yeah. So that you know, just like thank, thank you very much for the clarification. <laughs> we don't want to say that actually. Let me right. let me let me back up here. Uh, streetscape, uh, in, in by definition, is is design that happens within the right of way yeah. of of, a street, of of the street, which are uh, the basically the limits of the properties uh, on both on the north side and the south side in this right. case. But it's the uh, right off of the front of the property line. So we are not being inside uh, anybody's property. Um, I want to make sure that, that that's correct um, and that people understand that. Well, that, um, that telephone pole right in the middle of the walkway, that, I mean, that that's historic. <laughs> I, I don't know how I don't know how we can move that. It's going to be um, it's going to be hard not having it there, but I think I we know. live without it. We need know? a committee. <laughs> yeah. The pole Those committee. The yellow dots, the poles. Yes, in, in, the, in that original one, um, when we, we looked at actually in this in this um, in this uh, graphic, which I think is the first graphic, is it's actually those round circles. If you look at the legend or symbols on the on the, on the left side, mm -hmm. oh, it identifies all these all these poles. Um, right, concept one though, it's yellow dots. It's where the telephone poles are yes. going to be. Yeah, yeah. And so we've we've moved them around, you know, uh, so that they are. They work with the designs that we're trying to, to achieve here, and also they kind of get out of the way, which is basically what we were trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. I want to, again, I want to go back to the, 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 <laughs> the things that we did not include in these two concepts, because I, I want to make sure that the people who, who, who live in, in School Street understand that they, they were heard and that we did, did what they asked us to do. Um, so we, first of all, I just talked about the polls. What we are proposing right now is to actually bring, um, in, instead of, of, of moving the poles or up to the south side, is to, um, while this project is going to be pretty extensive and it would need to, uh, you know, interrupt quite a bit of the road. So I, in that process, it would be advantageous for the town to look at putting some of those services instead of having aerial services to the houses uh, to the south. We would uh, we're proposing in both of these concepts to actually have those services. What I mean is the. Uh, the, the, the service that goes from the pole to the actual house, having those underground just to clean up a little bit of the skyscape or the uh, area above our, our heads there. Uh, but again, we, we, we desisted on moving post to the south side of the, of, of the street. Uh, the other, uh, one of the earlier concepts had a sidewalk on the south side of the street and we've moved away from that. Again, we heard from uh, the neighbors, they, um, it was a concern of them having those sidewalks right in front, and we've uh, heard that, and we've, both of these concepts do not have that sidewalk on the south side of the street. So with all, all that said, um, I wanted to just move through these two concepts fairly quickly. Uh, the first one that we're seeing here is what we call concept one, and 
this the two bigger uh, difference uh, the elements that are different between those two is is the parking uh, one of these concepts this one has parallel parking along school street which again uh, helps we we had talked about in the first and i think everybody was in agreement that we wanted to reduce the speed on the on the street we wanted to narrow down the street to a point where people it felt uh, uh like they were not uh entitled to go really fast on the street. Um, in addition to that, we also heard about uh, having some type of traffic calming elements like uh, a traffic table, as we call it, or a large, shallow uh, speed bump. Um, so these concepts, both of them have those elements, but this in particular, the concept one, uh, incorporates parallel parking. Um, and we see um, that that it's one way to also kind of create this more uh, um, residential feel to the street and in addition to that also again it, it's it's being um, it's one of the techniques we use to uh, do traffic calming um, we've also incorporated in this as I just mentioned two traffic calming elements in addition to the narrowing of the street um, there is a traffic table right in the entrance uh, what we we're calling uh, this the kind of a formal entrance to all you know town offices the vets uh, memorial and, and the back area of the of the uh, of the library and then as we move uh, uh, farther down to the street we've also incorporated uh, a, a speed bump itself uh, after the entrances of the parking uh, for the library uh, again the idea is that we are as a person comes in and, and their vehicle either they're deciding to stop uh, so they're going to be slowing down to park and then when they get to this threshold right here they would be actually looking at slowing down even more because there's a traffic uh, there's a table there and then they will keep moving um, and if they got to the uh, boat ramp uh, at the end again they would need to uh, again slow down for the end of the street so we've kind of divided the street into three areas and I, I we believe that that's a good technique to kind of slow down the traffic and making sure that people understand there's going to be pedestrians here there's residential buildings here and people coming out of uh, the parking area of the library so that they're not uh, going too fast. Uh, we've, one of the drivers of this whole project was creating a sidewalk that was ADA accessible all the way um, that would, uh, all the way from, from uh, Main Street all the way down to the boat ramp and again both of these concepts incorporate that. Uh, we heard also the neighbors talk about having uh, I have one of these concepts where the sidewalk was right on the street, and but we've they were concerned about being right on the street, so we've uh, maintained a buffer between the street and the sidewalk all the way down to the boat ramp. Uh, and, and I think in the in the that's that's the concept you're seeing for concept one, and uh, concept two um, has parallel parking for most of the parking that we're providing. Um, and just to reiterate, this is the same amount of parking that we had before, so we're not losing any parking along School Street, so we're trying to maintain that number of parking spaces. Um, we have several, a uh, couple of, of still of parallel parking spaces, I think, um, just to serve uh, some of the other buildings that, are, that, are, that uh, are here on the corner, so one of them being the corner store. Um, we are proposing in the future to have some type of signage there so that they're, they, uh, the corner store currently uses this area as their loading area or where the truck would stop so we want to maintain that um, and in addition to that then at certain times they would use it and then the rest of the time it's all, it's all for the residents uh, for the historical society building and, and anybody who wants to keep going maybe to the park they could park there if there was an activity. Um, the, again the difference on this concept is that we've provided most of the parking as, as 90 degree parking or head on parking. Um, we've We've also eliminated all the parking that was right in front of any of the uh, Vets Memorial or the town offices in, in this concept. Um, and again, but it repeats all the other elements that we talked about. We are still having a sidewalk that's ADA uh, accessible all the way from front uh, from Main Street all the way down to the boat ramp. Um, we have incorporated the traffic calming elements in addition to narrowing down the, the street, which is gonna be the same. If we go back, you'll see that there's basically, those are the only two differences that you're seeing between those two. It's just the only difference you're seeing is the actual um, parallel parking or 90 degree parking spaces. Um, I wanted to move forward. Um, this is, 
one of the, I think moving forward, we're going to be looking at more detail. So once we choose between one of these two concepts, we're going to be looking at uh, how we're going to be uh, dealing with uh, the actual sidewalk and, and some of the other ele elements like paving um, to um, uh, signal that there is an entrance and kind of formalizing the entrance to the town offices as you're seeing here. Also in this concept, compared to the parallel parking concept, it has a straight line for the sidewalk all the way through. Um, because of the nature of the 90 degree parking, it, it does go in uh, a little bit into that library area. So the sidewalk um, is a, a little, there's a jog on the sidewalk. We've handled that with uh, what we call, a, this we would call a landing or an area where people are gonna be um, um, accessing the town offices. And then later on, we're gonna be looking more into depth on, on this corner right here. So that's why we, we, we incorporated this graphic. It's just that we are moving forward with whichever, when we choose one of the two concepts or the committee and, and the community choose one of the two concepts, we're gonna be looking at more uh, finer detail and, and finalizing the, the concept. Um, and what we are showing here is that there has to be a jog uh, while the other concept, uh, the concept of the parallel parking, concept one has a straight line that can, kind of goes all the way through. Just as a point of reference, this sidewalk we were showing here is in the same location as the current sidewalk is. Um, on the former concept, we're actually moving the sidewalk closer uh, and giving more green space and allowing more green space on, on the side of the library. And well, we're going to be, I'm going to show some uh, quick, uh, some uh, perspectives. Um, the first one is existing conditions um, of, of the entrance of School Street, just emphasizing the, the fact that it's a really wide entrance. Mm -hmm. And that, that's one of the reasons why you have cars kind of coming in maybe faster than they should, because they're just seeing this big, big entrance. Um, and, and psychologically, you see some big, big entrance and, or a big uh, driving way, and you want to go faster. Um, what we're proposing is narrowing it down, and I, I think these graphics, that's why we put these graphics together, it's pretty uh, uh, evident of what we're trying to do. Uh, narrowing it down from approximately 43 feet to 26 feet for the entrance, and then formalizing uh, the crosswalks um, in a better way, bringing in basically the, those two uh, edges of the road closer by. Um, this is concept one, which has the parallel parking spaces, so uh, we've measured out um, how, you know, why we want to make the road and, and, and we can go into a little bit more detail, but really what we wanted to show here is how we've narrowed down the entrance from existing to the proposed and then concept one that we have this parallel parking spaces in the entrance. You're going to see very similar entrance detail also on concept two, which is this is what you're seeing. So there's really no difference on the two concepts on how we are handling the entrance. We want to narrow it down. We're gonna keep, we're gonna provide these parallel uh, parking spaces in both of those concepts. I think the drastic or the, the bigger change is as you move, you keep moving forward. Um, now we are um, right, this is the Veterans Memorial, the mounds uh, that are part of the Veterans Memorial. This is existing conditions right now and some of the areas we have a width of the road at this point that's about 30 feet. Um, it narrows down, but because there's a lot of the time there's nobody parked here, it still feels very, very, very wide. Right. Um, as we move, um, this is kind of what we are proposing for the parallel parking concepts. So I'm gonna move back and forth on these two so people can get that feeling. We're not changing uh, really that the edge uh, towards the south. Uh, we are narrowing down mostly on, on the north side. Yes. Oh, sorry. There we go, this is existing, and this is the proposed, and this is the parallel parking uh, concept. Um, we are showing here the traffic, what we call the traffic table, which is a very a shallow, so we're talking about between three and four inches of a speed bump, and it's a wide speed bump. So the idea is that people have to slow down, but it's not this really hard hit that you would hit when you have a, a very high uh, speed bump. And then we are showing here uh, also the kind of this new entrance that we're, we're showing here where it kind of bumps out into the street. So if somebody wanted to be dropped off, mm -hmm. they would be coming here, mm -hmm. kind of stopping at that traffic table and then people could uh, um, get out of their car and move uh, uh, into the, into the uh, town offices. Um, so some of the other elements, I mean, I, I wanna, 
we can go in detail, but I think what we want to emphasize is on these two differences of the concepts. Uh, both of these, one is the parallel parking, and then you'll see in the next one, this is what we are, we, we'd be looking if we were doing the 90 degree or the head-on parking. Um, Car Carlos? You know, yes. The, the one thing, where does that Verizon box, how, where, where's that on? <laughs> I, I don't have it in, in here, but where would it lie? So the Verizon, Verizon box, it's and, just, and just, just, just west of the memorial. Yeah, yeah right, right in that area yeah. there. See where the person is standing? Somewhere in here, yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah, right in there. Yeah, we have not changed that. It's not shown here, and, and unfortunately, we cannot put every single detail. No, 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 no under every. understood. I, I was just... I, just I, I know that, that the Verizon is a is a big thing. Even when we did the memorial design of the memorial, was right. trying to shade it somehow, yeah. cover it a little bit. So I just didn't want to lose that. Yeah, and I, I think, it, and as we move forward with the next step of putting, uh, looking at some of the finer detail elements of streetscape, where we're looking more at again paving, uh, street lighting, which is or, or or in this case actually pedestrian lighting, we're showing that we're looking into uh, having some pedestrian lighting that's attached to some of these poles, so using them as a... Were you thinking that, or were you thinking kind of more bollard lighting? Well, we were thinking, I was, we were thinking of, 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 of this uh, uh, kind of more of a pedestrian lighting attached to the poles, because originally what we had shown, and but we were open to a bollard lighting too. I mean, if that's something that we, we, look, we would definitely try to look at what that would look like. Well, um, I I, I was just I just wondered be, be, because per, I, I I like I do I I like the bollards, but when 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 I've talked to people about the lighting, they usually say they rather have people want to see faces, mm -hmm. and, and the bollard lighting you will see like from the waist down, and you don't and and that's we have I have two and, and there's places they they work really well. I think on sidewalks. Um, you want to have that lighting from the top. One of the other things that we can provide by having this light is that it's totally downwards lighting, so there's right. no yeah. lighting uh, going yeah. everywhere, or that uh, feeling of having um, um, some glare that sometimes comes from yeah. from, from bollards. The other thing I uh, we step sometimes away from bollards in in public areas. I don't think it will be necessarily an issue here, but um, at, at at streetscape is that it, if you had. Um, they tend to be east, more easily vandalized than some lighting that's actually on top of you because there's no way you can reach. A, you know, this will be at 10 feet to 12 feet high. Um, but baller lighting tends to be uh, an easy target um, if you're uh, a, an adventurous kid with a bat and he's moving around. So when you're in the street, it's it. We try to avoid those. We like those more in in parks and and and, and maybe in areas like the actual like Vets Memorial. Uh, where you want to have some lighting that's kind of on the floor so people can see the floor, but you're not, you know, necessarily need to light, light too much. Okay. Again, and, and it's, it's a, it, it, I would hear any um, input. Uh, that's why we want a lot of people to show up to this meeting so that we can get a lot of input, uh, or at least if they're seeing us on TV now right now, um, if they want to communicate with, uh, with the committees on any of these uh, kind of further details, we would love to have some more input on that. I think that um, having something on pole that uh, is pedestrian lighting would just give you a visual repetition going down the street. Yeah. Well, so it brings the scale down. Yeah. We have these large posts, yeah, um, and having this <coughs> element that's going to be at a much more what we call pedestrian uh, scale or a human scale um, brings these massive poles that you might be walking by them and, and they be, look really big. Um, this actually brings the scale, up, I think, a little bit. Well, the top, the top becomes invisible at that point. Yeah, you could also do both. Yes, yeah. If we you would could put the bollards at the entrance. Where at the entrance. That's yeah. that's what I was going to say because right? you want a mix of lighting. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and I, I and, and again, when when you just talk about the lighting, I, I was just it, it was just curious because you have lighting over the road right now, but what's more important is it is it lighting on the sidewalks or the lighting of the road and and. Honestly, and to me, I would think it'd be more the sidewalks, okay. and especially what we've learned now after we did the LED, and Scott was pretty good on the photometrics of, of how the light shine. It would, it would, yeah. it's so much different today. Yeah, no, definitely. It's a lot like lighting in. We have that whole series of bollards in the back of the library, and if we were gonna 
have more ballers in that area, you might want to try to get the same ones. Yeah, something like that actually it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, incorporates with the, the design that's already there. Yeah, if you had, and Jimmy's right, if you had like ballers on the entrance of, yeah. to the town office building and the, the Veterans Memorial, it would kind of be more of a um, um, welcoming to those areas also. Are you worry about snow removal, maybe? Uh, yeah, we, you could put, put them off to the side a little bit. Getting in the way. Yeah. Those are all snow blowing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, plow for those at all. and one of the things is you see the strip that we are showing here red. It's, yeah. it's, it's purposely there. It's the area where we are only be putting uh, posts. We will be putting things that could actually withstand but the plowing in itself. Also, it opens, this gives you a buffer between the car that's mm -hmm. opening that door, and it's not opening a door into a sidewalk. Right. Right. And then the, the third thing is that we've discovered, obviously, these very s narrow three-foot strips of vegetation, <laughs> especially when people are, have to walk over them. They, they really don't, they, nothing grows there, right. and it becomes an, an issue of maintenance later on. Yeah. Um, so, what, so what do you do with it now, Carl? What we are showing here is that we, we are showing a different type of paving. It could be a brick, it could be a paver that's red, but it gives a buffer between, uh, basically that three foot buffer gives you enough you know, room to open your door without really interrupting oh, the a, sidewalks. That's you know, a great um, idea. Yep, and, and, other, um, and that's the area where we would keep our, our utilities like poles or anything else that could be happening in there so that we're not interrupting again the sidewalk or the uh, other parking areas. Um, so when we move to the next, which is where we um, uh, remove kind of the parallel parking in here, we concentrate all the parking then kind of to the side of the, of the library, and it's all 90 degree parking at this point. Um, so it opens up even more the entrance. Uh, it, it also provides this larger green um, strip where we envision that there could be what we call green infrastructure, a way that we can get some of the drainage in the street instead of just putting it in a catch basin and just sending it out to directly to the river. Um, it gives the opportunity of some of that water um, and where we are, again, when we get to the next step, we will be probably proposing uh, a, what we call a vegetated swale or, or uh, somehow where we are gonna be moving the water in here, the storm water that's generated by the impervious uh, walkways and the, uh, and the road, we would put it in, uh, in this area, let the plants um, um, filter it, and then we have the capacity of the soil to actually uh, percolate some of that water. Right, that you. first flush of very strong rain, obviously will, we would still have infrastructure here. We would still have a type of catch basin in there, but it would be elevated, so it would leave the, allow the water to kind of be there um, if it's a big, big uh, uh, rainstorm immediately, we're going to be draining all that water fast so because we don't want to create any flood issues. But when uh, that first initial rain goes by, then we have some opportunity for the actual water um, to infiltrate and, and, and go into the, um, into the soil instead of putting it into a pipe and sending it directly. And, and that's, again, it's something that's additive. If we can add these types of green infrastructures in different areas of town, that improves your capacity of not sending a lot of water directly to the river and then having issues downstream or flooding issues. And it's where the trend, it's funny because it was the way that water was handled in the past and we kind of stayed away from it and we engineered it so we could it. put it on in, this, in these pipes and now we're mm -hmm. moving back and rethinking right. this because um, the amount of water stream. that goes into the streams is not the right thing to do. We <coughs> want to actually try to sure. slow that water down yep. so that we don't have issues with flooding. Are you thinking about something like they were doing at Pulaski Park there? Or mm -hmm. there's some there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, and there's many, um, if we go to, I mean, if we go to Greenfield, the new parking area in Greenfield, that new uh, multi-story parking, mm -hmm. if you look to the side of that, in, in the road right next to it, you'll see that basically what it does is that there is a break on the curb mm -hmm. and it allows the water to then come into the curb and then exit it once if it's too much water then it could exit it or there might be a structure there but in, that's a, also another example in Greenfield that they've done um, and it's a low-tech way of dealing with you know um, storm water. Um, also we've you know we, we heard also some of the issues with plowing so you know, we, we minimized the number of islands that we had put in the in this parallel parking. We just limited it to one. 
but the, rea the, the reality is that we have one post that has to go there. We couldn't eliminate right. all of them. Right. So there's going to have to always be a small island, uh, small island there. Um, but again, we're trying to increase, you know, the, the, from going from this amount of paving, moving to these two concepts where we're reducing the amount of paving and kind of giving more space instead of to the car, giving some more space to them, the pedestrian and the kind of all the uh, public uses that we have on the, on the north side of the street. So the discussion so far has been focused really on pedestrian and sidewalk work. We talked briefly about parallel versus perpendicular. For sure. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go back then to, to talk a little bit about this. Um, so the parallel parking, um, the advantages of the parallel parking is that it's the safest parking in the sense that to, you, you're not backing out to a street. Yep. You, are, you have to, you, actually, you have to look back. There's this, when you're trying to get your car out of a park, parallel parking, you're not going to go blindly looking towards the sidewalk. You're going to actually want to be looking at the street. Mm -hmm. Where when you are actually backing up in 90 degree parking, um, there is the chance of being distracted, of moving backwards, just looking behind you, but not really looking to the side of the road. So in, in, in streetscape, we normally consider parallel parking safer uh, than the um, 90 degree parking. So that's one, one big difference. Um, one other difference that we have with the 90 degree um, is that, um, that you have to, the only, you know, one thing, and it's just put it straight out in the open, this person is not going to be able when you well, when we are in parallel parking, you're not going to be able to turn all the way around in the street. Right. Yeah. Right. So um, the concept here would be that people are going to be moving out of here of their parking, and then they would need to either go into the parking area and go all the way around, or they would have to go to the end of the street and maybe turn around. But the parking area for the library would be the most logical place where you would be turning around. If not, you would be doing several, uh, what we call, it would be almost a three-point turn that you would have to do if you really wanted to uh, turn around right in the street. Is it possible? Yeah. I mean, you can turn around in the street, but it would be much harder. You're going to be doing back and forth a couple times to actually be able to turn around. Um, and like everything else, there's pros and cons. I think, again, the traffic calming uh, sense also of parallel parking. Um, there is, uh, in, 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 in traffic theory, there is that because you're driving and you have the sensation that somebody could open their door, that it makes the person who's actually driving here much more aware of what they're doing in the street, uh, where when you have 90 degree parking, it's only the back of the parking of the car that's um, right at the edge of the street, and when somebody's driving, they don't necessarily feel that there's going to be somebody opening a door or, 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 or you know, there's people going to be maybe backing out, but um, that's one of the also advantages of the parallel parking. Uh, but to be clear, yeah, there there is that the big difference is that we're going to have to provide. You know, people will have to go in and kind of turn around um, to be doing the parallel parking. Where when we look at 90 degree parking or head-on parking, um, these all provide enough space for somebody to actually turn around. You know, they, you would come into the parking space park and then when you're exiting you can just turn back and then straight out into the street um, so is that, actually, is that legal though or legally are we supposed to be pulling back into the traffic and we should also be turning around that's a good question I mean, I mean I know we all do it you know because this is a, a, a low traffic street like we'll all do it tonight when we leave but you know you wouldn't do it in Greenfield you wouldn't do it, and you wouldn't do it, and there's levels, okay. you know, definitely levels, different levels of, of street, and I think this is a very, very, uh, the lowest level of traffic that you would think of a street in here, so, but you're correct, I mean, normally in main streets, and you, you sh normally, you shouldn't be turning all the way around, um, but I, I will, I will, I will definitely research a little bit more about that. And do you um, think with either one, 
are people more tempted to go into the private driveways to make their exit? So again, if, well, if that could become a problem. Mm -hmm. Again, if we're all, we cannot control what, what people are going to do. You can you can tell them what you know with signage and whatnot. But yes, I mean there there would be the temptation of people turning around in driveways if you needed to turn around. Um, like Laurie said, is if, if you're coming out here and, and, and you don't want to cross the speed line, it would be similar, but this provides that turnaround if, if you're probably illegally crossing that line and turning back out. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, again, I, 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 you know, we have to be sincere and clear on, on the differences on both of those, and I think there will be the chance of people turning around probably more in the parallel parking than if you were in the 90 degree parking. Well, concept two has more spaces, right? Because I can't, at least if they're marked accurately, there's a few more spaces there than in the parallel 18 version. 18, 15. Yeah. yeah, we started with 16. <clears throat> That's what we have right now. So we've kept on both of them the same amount of parking spaces, meaning we've kept either the same or more, you know, to, for the most part. Uh, but yes, this will give you more opportunity of parking spaces just because of the fact of uh, they, it takes less space to park in a 90 degree than in a, in a parallel parking. I will say from a, from a, what's that? There's seven. There's seven. Yeah. yeah, and from a safety standpoint too, now a lot of the newer vehicles are coming out with rear cameras that have a much wider angle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that does, so that does mitigate some of those concerns. Sure. So, I mean, when I look at it, I... What I like about the parallel parking is that I, that feeling, more residential feeling on the street. I kind of like that the sidewalk is a straight shot, straight shot right? Yeah, that's a job. Um, I'll show that. If, yeah. You know, there is this very There's clear two. difference between yeah. this and and that. Um, yeah. um, I have the yeah. opposite opinion on that. <laughs> it's a straight line. All it does is, to me, makes it look like a box, and the job makes it look. Fair. Yep. I just think everybody's going to have to be going into the library parking lot, which puts a different risk for right. all of the, you know, all the patrons there. I kind of lean more towards this to version, honestly, number two, from a practicality standpoint. Exactly. That was one of the other pluses. Because we're trying to trying to make that space around it more quiet and contemplative. Right. Well, they're not deep enough for it. Either side, they're not deep enough for a car to park the way they are now. Mm -hmm. I think um, I like the 90 degree parking, but not in this example because you still have to go into the library parking lot to turn around. So you're going to do it right. Because there are people, I've been mean, working here all day, we watch people try and turn around in that road, and it's not pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, so, the nice thing is you don't have through traffic in there, exactly. so you, you exactly. know, so it is v yeah. very quiet. So you can usually back, you know, back out and then yeah. pull out that way. Well, there also a lot of those spaces are now angled, so it's yeah, right, right. exactly. Angled, so you should have a straight shot. To the right. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why. Yeah, the, the angle parking, the way that it is right now, that makes it very difficult to back out. Yeah, right. this is much easier. And we this have way. that issue on one, yeah. on the on this side of it. That's in the parallel, I think you're going to have, I'll raise my hand, I'm going to be turning around in Jimmy Ruddock's yard. Yeah, but you don't Just like easy. Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, a lot of yeah, right. You, you of then they'll have you. Then you'll see signs up. Please, no turning and driveway. Yeah. You know, a lot of people aren't comfortable parking parallel, and so that they're going to seek out other other yes. areas, which is a different concern. Then it's going to well. push them into the library, or they can go in the back, which is fine because there's plenty of parking back there, which people don't recognize. Yeah, and depending on the time there. of day. It's yeah. hard guiding them back there for handicap parking and stuff like that. Along those lines, I notice now we don't have that central median going down the main parking area in the library, so that would be... In, in it's just is, graphics. Okay. It's just graphics. I, if I want to say just for um, that's a problem when we put these things together. Um, <laughs> obviously, we were putting much more of the emphasis of what we were designing within, obviously, the right-of-way. Right. Gotcha. Uh, I apologize for that, but there is a tra definitely a medium right here. Um, it, it kind of uh, it, it, it did escape uh, the, the rendering. Um, That's so cool. people would need to be, be going all the way around if they were um, right. coming in here because there is a, a, a medium right here. Which we so, had problems with the trailer parking back there too. Because mm -hmm. people park there with cars. Right, and they block it. Yeah, but it's really hard to, if you had two trailers parked back, my personal opinion, if you had two right. trailers parked back there, there's no way if there's a car parked in front of them, they're getting out of there yeah. with a trailer on it. 
you're not going to be able to make that turn. So Carlos, is there, based on the number of, uh, based on traffic count, a preferred method? We seem to be talking about the mechanics of backing cars in and out, uh, so and or parking. So the question becomes, it, the question for me becomes weekly volume, right? Or monthly volume. What does it mean? How is it? How so, does that help our decision? Yeah, I mean, you know, if it's if it's baseball season, it's a different discussion, yeah. right? If it's right now, there's gonna be nobody out there. Basically, very very few. Yeah. We did not go through a. Jim's here. There were up when I came. Yep. There were only two spaces left. Okay. And that's and you're saying there's nothing going on. Yeah. Right. We didn't have a big like if this room was fairly empty because it, it does get packed was, when we have big meetings. Actually, after I parked, there was only I think one space left. Yeah. Okay. And you're gonna be doing voting at the library. That's sure. true. So that's going to bring that. in more folks. Yeah, I think we've losing we've added added is a lot. I yeah, think losing sure spaces is not a good idea if we can help it. Yeah, and what we were showing, mm -hmm. you know, and this is to be where in the previous project that, that I worked with with the town, we were looking when we did the park, we added some parking area, the park. um, and we added so the trailer parking mm -hmm. now has moved, or most of the trailer parking has moved back here because it provides a little bit much better circulation. No uses. Yeah. <laughs> the buses are still parking really? along the, the fence there by the park, I mean by the baseball field. They do not go back there. I don't know how to convince them to go back there, but they're the always parking. Yeah. Yeah. But still, I think, you know, they're not parking. They're not even parking where the trailer spaces are. They're parked along the, the fencing <coughs> on the grass by the baseball field. Well, some people are just used to what they're doing. Yeah, and, they yeah. Enforcing and that's just yeah, yeah well, exactly. That's a conversation right. with get, the right. companies that are involved yeah. and get the this. schools that we work with. I think get yeah. the signs yeah. in place and, and then enforce them. Uh, I, I get the visual, like the visually pleasing aspect of having the sidewalk run straight down and what parallel will do, but you know, there's you sort there's, there's always a little bit of a compromise. To try to make it practical, you know. So, Carlos, is yeah. the northern, as illustrated there, is the northern boundary of the sidewalk inside the public way? It, uh, in this section from here to here yep. is actually on the library side. Okay, public. Um, so it's public, and every all the way through, it's on the right of way, um, and currently that's where the sidewalk where currently is. is. Yep. Yeah. Um, so. Again, we try to keep all of our streetscape within the right of way. This is kind of an exception because we actually own, you know, the town owns the street and owns yep. also the library. So yep. there, we still can do work within that area without having uh, issues of property lines. So at the entrance to the Veterans Memorial, is there a way from that entrance to uh, the intersection of the entry to put a, a gentle bend in there? So that this, when you when no. you're walking in, no, when you're yes, walking, yes, when yes. you're walking dead west from that intersection, mm -hmm. toward the entrance to the town office building, a gentle sweep. Well, the only issue we have there is that we have those mounts. I'm trying to get rid of that the horizon box as hard as I can. I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, try well, right. yeah, well, <laughs> well, we we yeah. Let me, let me. One of the. Not issues, I'm gonna say just the realities of what's going on in that particular area is that when we are designing, we have a berm on this side yep, yep, that yep, extends yep, and totally. another berm yep, here. Yep. So I would have loved to be able to have a little bit more room there sure. probably, yeah, but, okay. but we don't wanna really interrupt the berms. I was, I was getting my, my inner you know my inner art thing going. Maybe we, we could okay. get a, somebody to paint it like they did in Amherst. We'll just go hard right it's angles. Carlos. Yeah. That green space there is that intended to be grass? So again, we're we're because we 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 haven't gotten to the point where what what that would be. Um, it could be uh, some gr uh, ground cover, so it doesn't necessarily need to be grass. It could be okay. something that's less maintained. So yeah. right. there are sedge ahead the sedge um, uh, plantings that work really well. Other types of, of ground covers that don't require mowing. Um, okay. Big would be probably because that adds that's a plus. Mowing mm -hmm. and plus anytime you do a little bit like that, all those little intricacies add more expense to the contract. Yeah. Because they have to either use different equipment or it takes more time and then you have to clean up the sidewalks and all that. So what we've tried to do here, so you so you get a sense of scale here, is that these areas are 
three feet. This is about uh, another five to six feet, which is much better than that little strip that becomes really problematic and nothing grows. Right. So again, looking and I think the next step is going to be looking at what these plantings would be. If in, in e any of these bump outs, what are they going to be? Um, looking at what the green infrastructure, how could we integrate some of this drainage in those? You can get pretty creative with those spaces. I think. At, at six yeah. feet, you can put three row of corn in there. <laughs> so for sure, one thing that we had, we, we did some green modeling originally, I think we showed this, uh, you know, putting some larger trees there, and obviously we're trying to avoid, yeah. because we've been trying to actually bring things down, try to get the poles out of the way in that area, yeah. kind of open it up. So I don't, I don't foresee anything higher than two or three feet there. So it might be a ground cover and maybe some shrubs in there, yeah. uh, but nothing uh, much higher than that. Sure. And, and going to the, again, if, if we can use plants that are self-seeding, uh, that we're not really reseeding uh, or, or having to replant all the time, Right. Uh, normally, what we try to propose in these types of, if it becomes green infrastructure again, if it becomes a drainage uh, uh, type of, of planting, uh, we try, those have to be maintained in the long run. You know, you will get some silt. There are ways to deal with the silt and the dirt that's coming off from the street. At the entrance, there's kind of these filters, but eventually, five to six years or ten years from now, there might be some uh, replanting that you have to do. So bringing in, again, plants that can be easily planted, that could be uh, but um, as seeding, yeah. uh, instead of having to be uh, putting trees or big shrubs, uh, also is, is a good way to look at this and then having some bigger plants as one or two or three and not a bunch of them so that you have to then you know, be digging out plants and all that. So, so there's something complementary and consistent with what's already the ground cover at the Veterans Memorial? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and probably more of a grass right. uh, rather than, uh, I think there's a yuga or some, some really low right. growing stuff in there, but yeah. something more of a, a probably a grass or okay. kind of miscanthus or something like that. Yeah. But I guess I would just say that I think no matter what you do, there's a cost involved in maintaining it. Everything. Yeah. I mean, whether you're mowing the grass, like we have ground cover in the library that we have to weed out several yeah. times a year. Yeah. Just, uh, to get after it. Yeah, it doesn't take care of itself. Which is yeah. a big problem for us. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big problem everywhere, I gotta say. It's, right. it's maintenance. Normally, you know, when you get grants, are all for capital improvements. Yeah. They're not sure. for maintenance. Yeah, maintenance. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's something, I guess, that. that it's the uh, double-edged sword of, 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 of you improve. Definitely when you're improving, you have to maintain. But like Lori said, anything that you have in town, you have to, there's a level of maintenance you have to provide. One advantage of these, again, is having wider green areas if it's uh, something that they're gonna be, if we're thinking of mowing, um, that it's much easier to mow a, a, a wider um, spans than just these little pieces here and there that it sometimes happens, you know, with, with these types of streetscapes. What's the curbing material? Is it? Is, is it so in this, case, right now, I again, we're, we're, we, I wanted to get some, some. Um, yeah, I was headed there actually. We were, we want to get some, some uh, closure, I guess, on concept right. one Design. and concept two, so right. that yep. we can then move right. forward with the detailing. Um, I would propose to do uh, on, on at least on the um, uh, municipal side of the street. I would propose either a granite curbing yeah. or some something to that effect, I, yeah. I I would go with granite curbing, period. Um, that would be my proposal. It survives much better with the plowing. Uh, concrete um, tends to break down fairly quickly and it just doesn't, it doesn't age well. Mm -hmm. And um, and asphalt, we have the same issue too. Uh, the, uh, the asphalt yes. berm tends to be something that gets really destroyed. I, I gotta say between the three, it's the asphalt berm goes first with the plowing, then you got concrete, once it starts to chip, uh, moisture goes in there, and then yep. they start to pop, where you have granite curbing that lasts for 100 years, 200 years uh, easily. Um, so that would be my recommendation. Um, again, it's a little bit more of an upfront cost, or more of an upfront cost, but it definitely survives much better. And then thirdly, I think it's, it's you know, I have what we, I call the kind of the New England palette of streetscape, you know, where you have materials. Uh, the materials being granite, you look at the brick, um, it's another one of these elements, either by being a paver, being a stamped, or being an actual brick. Um, 
I tend to look into actual brick. Uh, it survives better salting mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because it's it's totally neutral to salt and it doesn't absorb it. Um, pavers uh, do degrade eventually. Over time, yeah. Um, um, so I, again, we've we've had really that palette of the granite, the curbing, uh, the granite curbing, the uh, um, uh, kind of the strip of or or the, the brick and using actual brick for it. Um, there's many different ways to do it, but there's actual brick for it. And then having, um, um, you know, we have con then concrete sidewalks. Um, the, I, again, it formalizes, I, it is a currently a concrete sidewalk, but I wouldn't propose to go to an asphalt sidewalk because asphalt is good in a park, mm -hmm. um, but um, it really formalizes the sidewalk when you make it out of concrete and also lasts longer. Are you picturing like city hall pavers or something in there for the yeah, yeah yeah or if we're looking I mean for me the uh, the other pa the paving pattern of the herringbone paving pattern which is a t much tighter paving pattern it it's right. it's less likely to loosen up yep and it looks visually it's very good also ADA wise it's what's recommended because you can have a much tighter uh, uh, joints in there and there's not this uh, movement of the paving so um, that's one of the uh, <clears throat> I mean, that's our civic center, and we have our two main buildings there, both work, I mean, it's a nice yep. tie-in. Yep. Well, and the thing is, too, is, is you know, like I said, you know, granted is more up front, but it's a matter of being penny-wise and pound-foolish. You'll spend less up front, but you're going to spend a lot more down the road, and it doesn't look as good. Yep. Yep. I, so I, I think you've got, there's a, a lot of argument for going for materials. It gives you a sense of place and, and everything. And I totally agree. And it might be that we end with some of that granite. Um, you know, it could be that we end with the granite somewhere after the uh, municipal. Uh, let me see if we get. Uh, um, because these, um, if we might be able to end with the granite maybe here, and then from that point on, or maybe up to the island, and then from that point on, it could be the asphalt that you have right now, because you're not gonna have as much traffic going that way. It right. stops being the municipal right. area, it really right. is a residential area. Yeah. So it's a, it for the, but I think, you know, the, uh, from, uh, it, it's it's not a large expanse of granite curbing. Right. Right. Um, it's not it's like small. we're doing all Main Street or, or something to that effect. So yeah. it, it's, it's definitely, a small enough area that I think it would be uh, best. And then, again, when we're talking about materials, you know, what this entrance is, again, we're in, I'm envisioning that that's going to be a paver with a, either an insert that's going to be a granite, a granite insert that's or a concrete gonna, insert in yep. there. Um, the pavers also provide the opportunity for having uh, memorial pavers, if that's something that people yeah, want to move true. to, the bricks, so yeah. that you could use some of these bricks. And what you do is you install all the bricks, and then as people want to, you know, they, they're uh, sponsoring something in town, or however you want to create that system, but then you basically pull one paver, put another paver in there, and, and, then, and you could have some, maybe that's something that the town wants to to look into. Um, they did that on Amherst, the, near the Emily Dickinson house, yep. that park there, yep. Yeah. So, Carlos, I, I, because, just because of the amount of parking, I like concept two, mm -hmm. because of the amount of parking, and B, maybe more importantly, that I remember when we put the library in, that there was a, a lot of discussion about cars going through the parking lot, right. and mm -hmm. and how it would turn around, turn right. around right. and, and, and <clears throat> And interrupt or Kids. alter the library. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. had a lot of discussions about that. Yeah. I would go. I would go with the uh, the concept too, um, because because I see if you put parallel parking there, from my observations, a I think people, m many people that live in Sunderland, because we don't park parallel park that often, would have trouble parallel parking. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that if you if there's any type of functions going on, um, that we would a either tie up the parking lot of the library, or we tie up people's driveways, or we tie up the road, mm -hmm. um, because now we're sh now we're narrowing up the road, so we have less people less ways to get by. I and I think concept two to me makes more sense. Although I, I do like con I aesthetically I like concept one better. Um, but I think concept two functions better in the yep. long run. Mm -hmm. so I, I just want to make sure that I agree, Tom, and I just want to make sure we're thinking about, too, what the residents 
you know, we're objecting to, I mean, the one right. the, as to the parking piece. And I don't really remember anything. I, you know, the only thing I'm thinking about is that the perpendicular does seem like it would prevent people from using driveways. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, but I don't remember, I don't know if anyone else does, about what the other, if, what the people brought up about parallel versus perpendicular. I That's a good point, Liv. I, I'm, I'm just, I just, and again, just, boy, I'm, I'm dating myself, but, but 20 years, 25 years in, in being around town hall, I know when we have a, a large functions here, it's very difficult getting people in and out. Mm -hmm. um, right. I, I, and I, I don't know. I, I, I know the way it, does, it doesn't work now, the way we, we, could we come in at an angle? And right. and it and it's not deep enough, so I don't park there because my truck is too long. Well, Heaven forbid. Too long. It is. I I don't I don't I I did I I was Carlos sings about adding five feet because you're basically if you keep the same point but your road is narrowed up, you're gaining five feet. Mm -hmm. My truck would now fit, you know. Um, well, these parking spaces, they're, these are standard 18 yeah. by 9 Eight, feet. 18, 18 feet by yeah, 8 by 9 some, feet. Or 9, nine feet, yeah. Feet. That's nine basically feet. what we would be working on, working with. And, 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 but I don't, know about, I don't know about you, Liz, but I just see par if you parallel park, you're going into that library parking lot. Yeah, no, I, I like just, I was just trying to remember what people brought up, and I just don't recall. To be frank, I don't remember that that being such a... I don't think parking of, was a big of, issue for them. Yeah, a conflict It was there. more speed and things like that. Yeah. People were more, yeah, they were more concerned about, again, of, I think, the, the poles and, and the sidewalks, you know, where they would be if they were on the other side. I, you know, I, again, I don't... I think yeah, I think you're yeah, right. I, mean, I already, the, I already said I'm not too. So it's aesthetically nicer, but I do like the green bump out in front of the Veterans Memorial. Like right, exactly. View of the parking mm -hmm. as and, you look down the street. And we can get really creative with those spaces, and you can make up for with your material use. You know, the lack of having that straight mm -hmm. line, and and in some ways it actually breaks up and makes it a little more interesting too visually. Colin, are any of those? Um, <clears throat> In either situation, required to be ADA spaces. Um, so, the question is that ADA, as, as far as, and I'm not gonna because I, I haven't really looked at, but my understanding is that you have your ADA spaces here because there's really no ADA access to the Both building from the front. From the front. Yeah, yeah. That's true. You have to go to the access. elevator. Um, so we would need to be... Uh, You'd have to call for an exception. Say, yeah. listen, we want to put in 23 parking spots, but we want no handicapped spaces. Or, or Please we, accept our grant. Is there a ramp? ramp? And we could That's have right. another parking... We could have one of these parking spaces. There is space for having the parking space and having a, um, a ADA ramp there sure. if we needed to occur ramp in here. Just can't go anywhere. Well, um, I would add if we add the there, there are of there spaces, are sillier there are there are sillier state ranks. <laughs> well, yeah, well, and did you make this a little bit more ramp up to the table, or is it because the height of the table that would make that? The, well, then, yeah, you, if it's not required, you right. but you can go around. Yeah. Right. Well, in, and in here, really, if we had a sidewalk on, on the opposite side, then it makes sense. But we don't have a sidewalk on the opposite side, so okay. you're if you're dropping somebody off, it's just a drop off. It wouldn't be an ADA um, accessible uh, thing. Um, there is a ratio of number of parking spaces to the number of ADA parking spaces that you have to provide. I would, I believe that right now. We were we were okay if we okay. are counting all the parking spaces that we have between the library and these ones in the front. I can go through that count again I now that we have an extra. We're looking at this one that might have an extra five, and we needed a a, a parking space here. Um, you have to be, I believe, two hundred a minimum of two hundred feet from the accessible <laughs> what's called the accessible route. Mm -hmm. yeah. it has to be less than two hundred feet. So if we were to provide a ADA parking spaces, it would be to access the library, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. that does already and you have them on the other side. So, you know, it, it's something that we can think about, but I, it's not the ideal location necessarily for ADA parking right. because you are not really accessing uh, any of the buildings um, that way. I was a particular but it could be for the Veterans Memorial. Again, if, if yeah. you wanted to have one ADA parking, one or two ADA parking spaces, what would happen is that we would lose one of these would become an aisle. Right. 
Yeah. And then you have normally then one or two parking spaces on either side, one or, or, or two total parking, uh, 88 parking spaces on either side. And it's totally achievable here. It's about just lowering, uh, creating basically that, sure. that curb ramp in there. For the innovation to the veterans, the veterans more, it makes well sense. sense. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. 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 yeah, as we, that's the beauty. Again, I want to emphasize if we have more people, more people will be making more comments and that makes my life and my design process better. <laughs> oh, don't worry. They'll Just want to say that. They'll tell you after the fact. Yeah. <laughs> so you yeah. can see. But it, because it, these things air out, and then we, I think about them and I go like, well, yeah, it makes total sense to have some maybe right. 88 parking right. for the veterans more. Yeah. So. You could. But, okay. but um, I, I, again, especially not, and again, the thing about voting in the library yep. and yeah. right. it's all the more reason for more space I, I just think long long term you'd be yeah. better that way so what's the uh, since it's it's pushing eight o'clock what's the is there consensus about one concept or the other after the discussion or discussion at this point I think village center group Say that again, so it, it pushing eight o'clock is there any uh, consensus that's come up about concept one or concept two as I understand the goal of tonight is to give Carlos direction with respect to uh, how to get closer to 75% design on a concept, right? Jim? I was concept two before I got here. We just had to, we, we had to go through the whole discussion. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm in favor of concept two as well um, for a whole host of reasons. So yep. we are posted for tonight, and if there, if we are a seven man of our committee, then we have a quorum. Okay. I I I'll, think I'll you I personally I think you put a concept out there, and if it's uh, open overwhelmingly disagreed with, we're going to hear about it real quick. Sure. Very sure. <laughs> so from the village center uh, yeah, working group. To, uh, proceed with concept two. Motion to proceed with concept two. Second. All in favor? Aye. I get to vote twice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I took the drawings home and studied it, so I kind of knew what I was uh, up for when I came in. Uh, Scott Crane. Can I just jump back? <clears throat> sure. I don't know if everybody heard what you said, David, about what, but which? Uh, the Verizon box. Oh, a painting it? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. <laughs> Yeah, like like they did in Amherst with the Emily Dickinson yeah. well, we, one in, in, in Northampton. We could it before. What, did I we, we talk about painting it? We painted. We talked about painting it too. You have? Yeah. Did it? in nauseam. And they don't I like think the they idea. Told us we weren't allowed to do that because we wanted to at least make it the same color mm -hmm. in the dark green or something. And I believe we were told we couldn't do anything to it. Are we charging them rent for the spot? No. <laughs> No, they own, they own that piece. Uh, we could, we could, we could pe pe petition them, petition them for an arts grant and make it a Dr. Seuss painting. It'd be fun. There you go. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the Northampton, I think yeah. too. Yeah. Every every one of the power boxes. I would, I would yeah. think that if if we move for, if we move <laughs> forward, that's that part yeah, of that's a good Carlos's thing. We would contact the design, him. Right. Yeah. I I like to see it go underground, but that's just me. But. Yeah, well, if we're going to bury nice. the other um, utilities, can we like bury that thing? That would be, I would say, and not being an uh, electric engineer or, they or an official from uh, they won't let you do resource, it. is no. that they've been moving towards not having these vaults, which is what would be, do you have to bury yeah, the whole right. thing? Because it's water a issues. It becomes yeah, a water, water. It becomes a confined, it becomes um, a confined space. And then and that's need, the second reason. And you need two people to enter into that, so they don't, yeah. and they don't want the water. So we we talked when we did the veteran memorial. We talked to them about moving. Most of that. the town goes through that. Box. And we learned how much it would cost, and and it's more expensive than trying to move a a whole the whole road of. Light poles. You see it in the middle. You see it in the middle of the street. The big hose going the ground. Uh -huh. Is there enough room to put a barrier in front of it? We we talked about that, and, and I think the design people, the veteran memorial, said it would be better if we naturally screened it instead of trying to put up a. Yeah. So if you can put natural screening, that's the way to go. Yeah. Because there's not enough room. The there, there's also access. I am. I've had these issues in all other projects. There's also this access issue. The doors have to. And there's code for yeah. the, the amount of space that they actually it. need. Especially for, I don't know for Verizon, but definitely for electric uh, yes. um, boxes, uh, they need to have enough space yeah, to swing yeah, the door for, and, and all these for switches and transformers, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. So that's that's one issue. Yeah. I just wanted to 
make sure that we all are. Um, so we, we're moving with concept two. The next step for me is to sit down with the committee. We're going to be talking about then some of these other details, details maybe some of the uh, mm -hmm. things that we talked about today about bollards and locations for these things. Sure. Um, maybe uh, it kind of starting to uh, finalize the design of some of these elements, more of the aesthetic elements that we are thinking of, you know, the paving and different paving pattern, uh, the materials and, and so forth. Um, and I would love to have more input <coughs> of what people think uh, they, 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 you know, what they, what they envision and then we can move forward with that. We've talked about signage already at one point, how we can incorporate it here with maybe some of the poles and some of the uh, kind of uh, flags kind of uh, coming oh, up yeah, from yeah. the poles and, and things that. like that. So I, <coughs> that's the next step is just getting ourselves kind of a catalog of the details that we want to include here and then we would then be moving to the construction documents. Do you want a motion so, from the board for a vote? Or? I want to ask a question before I have that motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At what point do we get the budget for the 75% design? So we, uh, for, Is that so from your budget, or from your other community if members? You it's want, long, it's long. Mm -hmm. I think now that we're going to be, I'm going to be doing a very preliminary budget once huh? now that we have one concept. Right. So that will be, and that will be very, we start with very uh, conservative, numbers, um, we would put a huge amount of contingency. Sure. So normally when you're at 90% or when you go out to bid, you end up with 15% contingency, that's or 10, 15. But at this point we will be looking probably at 25% contingency because we don't know a lot of, sure. yeah. There's a lot of other uh, kind of information that we need that, that we need to when we progress uh, through here. So. I think the next step, again, figuring out what the detailing is that we're thinking of, and then at that point we will be putting together a preliminary budget number. And does the figuring out stay in the existing appropriation? Yeah, we're still in the okay. same budget. We're yeah. basically, we're at 75% of the, the budget that we have, 75 to 80, now that we've had this you know, meeting today and whatnot. We, I've left enough money there, that 20%, so that Come we can around yeah, look, details, yep. look back at the details and then have some, some cost estimating. Got it. Um, and okay. at that point, though, then we need a proposal from Carlos Correct. to get to the next stage, and apparently there's money set aside, but that's going to have, hopefully we'll have to have a Separate appropriation, but yeah. Right. Yeah. And that will be moving from what we call schematic. We, we by the end of this, we will be at the beginning of what we call uh, design development. Yeah. And then we look at that budget will be for construction documents, CDs. Yeah. And that will be moving from zero percent of CDs to seventy-five percent, or somewhere close to seventy percent, so that we can then go for grants. Okay. Okay, I wanted to make sure people heard that this this is a phase, and that right. it's leading to the costing <coughs> of the next design phase. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to be fairly locked into this design now. Yep. So. Yeah. Okay. So a motion to accept. Motion to accept. Recommend. Uh, Tom option wants to vote two. twice. Second. <laughs> 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 <Sorry. laughs> All those in favor. Aye. Thanks very much. Design two, Carlos. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Thank you for the direction. That's always. Uh, so next step. It's always beautiful to get to the next step. Next step. Brilliant. Okay. Since the place is packed, public comment? <laughs> and not hearing any. Breaking granite. That's just okay. my opinion. Thanks so much, Carlos, as well as the, work, the group that's working on this. Uh, no, thank you, and thank you for the opportunity to do this work. No trouble at all. Okay, minutes of December 6th, Motion. December 10th. Second. I just put the one and I mm -hmm. <clears throat> didn't know I was going to get more done. Okay. I, got, I got a pair of them in front of us. These are both interviews. You get three. Yes. One's on the back page. Oh, 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 oh there it is. There we go. All right. Oh, yeah. Firefighter recognition. Yeah. Village Center Committee. CPA grant cycle is still open until January 31st. That's important to bear in mind. So the Motion for six, nine, and ten. Motion. Mo second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero, please. On the minutes of December 6th, December 9th, December 10th. Yeah. <coughs> Next up.
Oh, there was a 12th in the back of that. I'll, I'll this is the last of our interviews. Is there a motion to accept the minutes of December 12th? Motion. Start. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Two to zero. I didn't flip the page over. Sorry about that. Having them in your hands. Okay. That's those four. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Save paper. That these should not go to waste if just to let people. License renewals. Is there a motion to accept license renewals by the slate? Motion. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. These are license renewals for 2020, and they include under alcohol license, Billy's Beverage, Blue Heron, Bridgeside Grill, Bob's Barbecue, Demos, Go 10, Golf Mart, The O, Spirit Shop, uh, Sunland Corner Store. And under Class 2, All States, JR Service, Roy's Automotive, Non alcoholic common Vic includes Dove's Nest, Dunkin' Donuts, Frontier Pizza, Mike's Maze, Millstone Market, Schnowski's Farm Stand, Subway, Sugar Loaf Frosty, Sunderland Market, Wild Roots Cafe, and Market. And I these make, are make a motion to uh, approve the licenses contingent upon satisfactory, satisfactorily uh, meeting the requirements of a uh, license renewal in the town of Sunderland. Second. And that means. That, what that means is that taxes are paid, water bills are paid, sewer bills are paid. Um, they all, that all your requirements are met. But we, we have a bylaw that yep. says that, that to get a license, you have to be up to date and paid. So Correct. Yep. So I, I would make a motion to, uh, to uh, approve based on uh, complying with Sunland Town bylaws. They also signed that as part of the affidavit. They've paid all their taxes and everything right. up to date, so. Yeah. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion is being seconded for the slate contingent upon meeting the town's bylaws. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Through the zero, please. Okay, Blue Heron extension of hours. Thanks so much, Carlos. No problem. Annually, the Blue Heron is way ahead of the curve. They want to ask to be writing for the request of a one-day extension of hours special permit for New Year's Eve, Tuesday, December 31st. We'll be closing at 1 a.m. And understand that all employees and vendors need to be off-premise within 90 minutes after the close of business. Thank you for your consideration, uh, co-owner, Ms. Deborah Snow. All of us, the public safety folks have been through this, oh. and the Blue Heron has done this all the, all the one year. <laughs> yes, right. Each year yeah, we do it. Or the schedule. The yeah, yeah. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, discussion? Mo mo yeah. Motion on that and the source. Uh just, just so by by law they're they're allowed uh, by regulate ABCC regulations they're allowed to do it twice a year. So right. that's why we uh, grant it. Second. Motion is made and seconded, uh, and I thank the Blue Herons for their time that they were in a month ago almost. So, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Next up, uh, select board updates. We have town administrator position to talk about, but are there any updates outside of that? Also. No, okay, town administrative position. We had three second interviews last week, and uh, let's go around. The, let's go around the table and talk about uh, our thoughts on those interviews and path forward. I would suggest that uh, the three uh, candidates all interviewed. Um, I want to thank them all for taking the time to come back and talk with us. I think our interview questions. And the give and take in the second round mm -hmm. is always a little um, peeling a layer back off the onion, if you will. It's a little more free flowing and it's also a little more um, comfortable for everybody involved. Anybody who has interviewed knows the challenges associated. The second interview yeah. tends to be a little more comfortable. And each of the candidates uh, displayed that. And I thought the questions to the board were thoughtful. My feeling mm -hmm. is they were thoughtful. And uh, that gave me some uh, insight as well. I would, um, I would say that we have, of the three candidates, their backgrounds, one held, each has held committee positions and or elected office. Each has, has or is currently working in a municipal environment. One is in the planning, one is in economic development, one has been in academia as well as a town administrator. 
So in, in that sense, um, I thought all candidates brought the requisite uh, experience and our discussion was solid. If I could, if I could start right off the bat, um, if the board would allow me, mm -hmm. um, I, I see that in, in, from my perspective, the candidates that interviewed the best and gave me the warmest and most confidence uh, were uh, Jeff Kravitz and uh, Sarah LaValle. And I would be happy to have either of those two uh, working uh, for the town of Sunderland. That, um, <clears throat> that matches. Um, that's my starting point. That, that's my, I'll start in the same spot, yeah. yeah. After my, like sitting down, going over the, you know, the interviews, thinking about it and everything. Yep. Yep. And, and based on the different um, skill sets too, you know. Um, I think because the connections with having state experience as well it sort of adds an extra layer, mm -hmm. I think, um, on that. And then we could certainly use some help in the economic development department as yeah. well. I, I thought that was a nice bonus. Of the pair, you've got one who's focused on the current position economic development and the, and the, yeah. uh, and the, and the second, this era, on planning. Right. N neither are bad skill sets and backgrounds to have. Exactly. Bring it forward. Yep. Tom, <clears throat> thoughts? Um, hiring, hiring anybody in the municipal arena is a very difficult thing. That's for sure. It's, it's yeah. not easy. And, and over the years, we've hired a couple of town administrators, a couple of chiefs of police, uh, treasurer collectors. Um, and I, I don't think it, it gets any um, highway superintendent. Right. Um, it doesn't get any. It doesn't get any easier. And 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 the, unfortunately, there's there's not a science um, to the thing. You know, in my in my thing, it's pretty simple. You know, P one, V one equals P two V two, and I can I do those formulas, and it's easy. Right. Um, un unfortunately, um, hiring h hiring someone's not. Um, hiring, hiring, you have, um, you, you can look at a person's past um, skill sets or the or present skill sets. Um, you can talk to you can talk to others. You can you can do all kinds of stuff. But your bottom line is is you have to have a good. You, you I think when you offer the job, you have to have a good feeling about the person. Um, and, and that's 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 the most and, and that the person does um, what they set out to do um, and I, I don't I don't think it's a it, it's it's hard because I think each of the three showed a uh, um, showed us um, divergent skill sets right um, yeah. and that in each skill set each skill set is probably there's something there's advan advantages to different skill sets doing our different things in here in town. So um, I, I I thought I, I I've gone to sleep a couple the last couple nights and I I've been thinking about the meeting tonight about um, who the best person for the job and to and to take us. And, and 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 typically, town administrator in a s s town of Sunderland size is going to last three, five, three to five years, three to seven years, and and that, that's historic. I mean, if you can go to a, a surrounding communities of similar right. size, and so and and I think of it as an opportunity to because we're going to we're going to get somebody that's going to come in and work their dickens off because they 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 want to move forward, right? Um, and and that that's okay, and and because I look at the people that we've had, we've had great town administrators to date. I don't think that's gonna okay, that's like gonna it. change. Um, so I, I guess when you when you look at it, I I think any of the three could do the job. Um, I I was. I was in, intrigued by one of the things Sarah said when a question about uh, 
someone moving forward for promotion and, and and I she was the first person I think that ever said what I would expect is that not everyone can be promoted <laughs> or wants to be or wants Some people to, or wants to be right I, and I thought that was, I thought that was uh, I thought that was um, I, I think that told me a little bit about Sarah's um, personality and her management style. I didn't have to ask after that. I didn't have to know about her management right. style because I knew she was a very direct person. Right. Yep. Um, Just because you can do a job well doesn't mean that you make a good manager of that. Because it's and a different skill set and, and but, a but different she, desires. But, it, but a lot of people, I haven't known a lot of people that would say that, you know? It's true. I'm not so, but at the same time, there are things in, in just, I, I think, uh, Jeffrey, one of the things that I took from him, um, I personally believe is one of the most important things. I think he has a strong sim sense of empathy for people that live in the live in a community and for the process. Correct. Yeah. I, 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 it, it struck me to my nerve how uh, my deepest. My deepest belief is that people in municipal government um, were were here to were here to help people. I, after Jeffrey's interview, I really believe his entire. I I I believe that's deeply ingrained in him. That it's a service that, job that, in that sense. I mean, yeah. it really is. You know, and 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 we and <clears throat> after you can become jaded after after twenty years in the in in the thing, um, but but he to me, I thought when on his interview and his follow up interview, um, he likes um, people. He likes being. Around people, he likes solving people's problems. Um, I at this point, I put a motion that we consider hiring Jeffrey Kravitz, or or ask the chair to enter into conversation negotiation with Jeffrey Kravitz as the <coughs> next town administrator in town of Sunderland. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd second that. So we have a motion made <coughs> and seconded to extend an offer. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Any discussion? I, 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 I don't mean as a. I, I hope it's not taken as disrespectful to to Sarah and or Angie. I just think Jeffrey, um, in in his interview, showed to me. Um, I I think what he has to offer the town right now, um, what he has to offer the town, could greatly, greatly. Um, Benefit from let's put it that way. Okay. So, any other discussion? If not, hearing any. No, nope, I think I'm good. So I, I'm pretty comfortable with my motion made yes. and seconded to extend an offer to Jeffrey Kravitz. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. So Aye. we'll get a letter out. Um, um, go ahead, Mr. Chair. I I would. Um, I I. I don't don't I hope I don't say this but I I would think that you would do the uh contact yeah I'll reach out um and see if we see if we can uh you know touch you know touch base with them and begin to begin negotiations yes. a see if there's an acceptance negotiations and then see if we can come to a conclusion yeah because because if it doesn't work out I I still think we have um, candidates candidate. that absolutely that could do the job. I, I right. think we were extremely lucky. Again, okay. And okay. your free time, Scott. <laughs> yeah, all of it. All right. So I'll reach out to uh, Mr. Kravitz first thing in the morning, and uh, we'll take it from there. Mm -hmm. uh, letter to Angie and to Sarah, thanking them and recognizing that you know we are only in negotiations, and that we'll be happy to hire them. I don't know if you. I don't know if you need to make a letter yet. Okay. What do you think? I, I mean, I, I. I would. I would. I would. I would talk to Jeff and see where. Right. Where that goes. Um, 
and and yeah, why don't we why don't, why don't we start sure. with that? Okay. Um, all right. So that's our that's our, our decision for tonight. Uh, we have one other piece here. We have a correspondence from its follow up from uh, our sewer operator, and it has to do with uh, infiltration inflow investigation, the INI. Mm. So there is a handful of properties they want to have a follow up on. And they're looking for our guidance on green lighting that follow up. One of them is going to require a correspondence to the board, which we can draft, and the other mm -hmm. is effectively uh, yeah. notifying the, the people who have the ties on. Yeah. So that said, they're looking for a little bit of guidance, and the answer is do it. Do yes. it by all right. means. Forge okay. ahead. So we have a motion in the f in the form of a motion to yeah. go to the second that second stage of investigation for the properties that have been identified. Yep. I'll make a motion to move ahead. Second. <clears throat> okay. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. <clears throat> and, and, and again, it, it's a it's a public it's a public system. Yep. Correct. We we all agree, we all agree to operate. Within the town bylaws, correct. And and what we're trying to do is is the state's telling us that we we're, we need to check I and I. Right. That and and basically people have re, there are some that have refused uh, to allow that this to be inspected. Yep. I mean, so it's to me it's a simple thing. It's either allow us in or shut your shore off. Sure. Well, exactly. So it's interesting. Part of your agreement essentially to utilize it's the interesting public services. that you know none of these are brand spanking new buildings, mm -hmm. right? And if you look at the inflow sources, yard drains, roof leaders, yard drains, roof leaders, driveway drains, roof leaders, yard drains, roof leaders. It's like, hey, you can't put that stuff in the sewer. And it, it can't work that way. And it also comes down to a fundamental point of respecting the law. Right. Right. I mean, a set of rules. So a set of rules to operate by. Yep. I, and again, I, I, I just, I, I don't, it's, it's, you know, we all have. To we, we, we've been doing this for a long time now. I, you know, we've been smoke testing, we've been drain testing, yeah. we've been die. You know, we'll go to die test. We'll mm -hmm. do. I mean, there's various things for us to sure. to think, but we we have some rules that we're trying to abide by, and everybody abides by those rules. I think it's also important to bear in mind that that this is the follow up to an inspection, right? right? So the right. same level of inspection, half dozen, God, it feels like half dozen, probably more than that years ago, led to uh, root infiltration in From one the of the lines that we ended up relining. Right. Yep. right? It, led, it led toward capital work. So this isn't necessarily accusing nor absolving. This is finding where the water comes from. Right. Well, oh, well okay, that, you, you're right. But but I will I will I will I will mention we had an incident in the last twenty years where someone had a a floor drain in a basement hooked up to straight the sewer to the system. system. Correct. Stru when, and, straight. and we're talking straight, <laughs> straight to the sewer. Right. Now there was a there was a disturbance downstream of that. Sure. And the people weren't home. Backed right into it. And it back and, and we yep. had feet of sewer in a person's thing now they didn't know but they they didn't know mm -hmm. that they they had bought the house they didn't, they didn't know. know they right. didn't know right all right so so basically doing the studies can help of, of help solve a problem before right. it correct before, before it occurs right mean, so it, it can help people out correct no there's no doubt about that Tom we wouldn't so, expect sewer on the roof but you driveway drains you know, mm -hmm. those kinds of places, it, it, the flow can go both ways. Yes. Well, Unless we know that because we, ha we <laughs> have seen it. And, 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 and look, you know, they were upset because it, it sort of backed up into the thing. But we were, you know, we were upset also because because our sewer, our, our sewer backed up into somebody's house. Correct. It's, it, that's a, simply a public health issue. Yeah. It's and infrastructure, we, but it's effectively mm -hmm. public health. Yeah. Uh, so... So again, I, 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 I think that you know we 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 needed we need to do this, mm -hmm. and and we have found we've found some bad things before they cause worse things. Correct. So. And to the three that have positive sources of your sump pump into the sewer system, 
you know who you are, you're going to get your notice, and they got to be disconnected. There is a bylaw that says it's got to be visual, it's got to be beyond 20 feet beyond the perimeter of the building that it's ejecting from. I have one of those pipes in my yard if you want to see how it looks when it comes to the wet season. Anyway, it'll be here before long. It will be here <laughs> before long. Okay. Any other discussion tonight? No. No. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Motion's made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, what do you think, FCAT? Should we go? All right. Yeah. We get a thumbs up thumbs from up FCAT. From the control board. All those in favor. All right. Call us up, please, at 829. Thank you.